Hello there. Paul here with the Baby Belt 3D printer. This machine is fully assembled. See the previous videos. Today we're going to test movement, heaters, homing, and hopefully get a decent first print out. Hold in temp at 180. Move a millimeter. Can we move the X? Certainly. X movement, the Y movement. And we lost our. I have not done any lubrication, clearly. The Z movement. The Z movement is very unhappy. Getting the belt back. So we got some movement on the belt, but we're stalling up in here somehow. I don't think it's under enough tension to worry about, but I did tension it a good bit. And here we're resting on the nut. I actually might be. So I think we're resting on the nuts more than on the bearings. So that's trying to get into a square. Uh, I have to look into that. Clearly this bearing isn't serving his purpose. We got belt movement, we got, yep, we got heat. Last one, the extruder. Mm, are you going in the right direction? It looks like the directions are all correct. Mm. I mean, just to revisit the size of the thing. There's your roll of belt filament. This is a very tiny printer. Interesting. In the icon, we have slow, normal, and high. But yeah, it's functional. I'm gonna open this up and I think there's something I need to redo on the the axis. So I open this guy up and the rollers move nice and free, but this guy keeps getting hung up. Oops, he ran out of the... Uh, like just a little bit of swarf on the print. You can see the motor is turning this off-centric cam here. That's why the bearing is oscillating to these guys as it does so. Now every lobe is going to go to every groove eventually. So I think the best way to fix this is just to have it run for a while. And it's basically, I actually printed these parts, not Rob's printing, so. Basically, I should have printed a little higher settings, but it'll be all right. Throw it a time lapse, because I think it'll look cool. Uh, it's just fascinating to watch these gearings work. Quick state of the printer. Just trying hardest to get it to work before I hit to CES, but unable to. This stepper motor doesn't want to turn past a certain point, so good news. I get to open it up and see how they work inside. Bad news, I can't get the printer printing just yet. I solved the um, Z-axis issue by reprinting the parts in PLA. So I printed these in PET-G. I didn't think it would make a big difference, but the amount of friction on the uh, PET-G, it wasn't wearing in. Might have eventually, maybe some different lube, but almost there. I don't know what's wrong with this, and we'll open it up to find out, but anytime your motor's crusty, you just, uh, you can hear it. For some reason it turns a little bit and then locks up. So my guess is some of the gearing inside is stripped out. We'll open it up, see how it works. But anytime you open up a stepper, it's pretty much garbage. So, gotta do one, get her going. Welcome back to the baby belt. This is commissioning, tuning, and getting our prints out of the printer. Now, I already have the first print, and it doesn't look very good. Two clear problems. This is supposed to be a 25 millimeter cube. This is from the Kirimoto slicer, so it's just their little default object. You can sort of see 
the start of the uh, little round rhombus in the dragon. But it's supposed to be 25 millimeters side to side, and it's basically there. And this is in the X direction. And the Y, Z, really hard to measure. But basically what I'm seeing is our Z steps per millimeter are way off, and so are our E steps per millimeter. So we're going to show how to calculate those. The E is something you ought to do on nearly any printer. So, we'll do the extruder first because that's relevant to pretty much any printer. I got this hooked up to my computer so I can control it through prompter face. It's not super exciting, it's just a tiny bit more control than I get from the LCD. If you get a nicer LCD, you can actually enter in G-code commands, so you'd be able to do all this from there. I'll just call out the command sound to run the camera back and forth. Uh, the first thing I'm doing is heating the nozzle to 210 degrees. This is a Bowden tube, so what I'm going to do is actually retract the filament quite a ways out and set the steps per millimeter on the extruder without actually extruding. We want to make sure that the extruder is getting as close as possible to perfection. Let's see, what can I do to prop this guy up while it's heating? To measure your E steps per millimeter, you need a pen and some calipers. So I'm actually going to measure this backwards. So I'm marking this right outside. Right outside this guide there, just as a convenient spot. Should be warm enough now. So our E steps per milliliter is 2080. What I'm going to do is retract. I'm going to retracting 100 millimeters of filament, and then we're going to measure how far we go. Once you've got that down to 100, you measure the distance that you went. Helps to have a convenient stop. And if all is well, it should be right around 100 millimeters. In this case, it's 133 millimeters, just about exact. So we're actually 33% over, which is interesting. I'm going to get back to zero and see how close we come to the start. So repeatability is the crucial part. Make sure that when we go 100 millimeters in each direction, we get back to the exact same spot. We're going fairly slow, first off, due to having these tiny steppers, but also because when calibrating, you want to make sure that you're not losing steps in any other way. I think we were probably losing steps to, to acceleration or trying to go too fast or something on the, while we were printing. Because I turned the extrusion up a lot to get what we saw. That's not good. We're quite a ways off. In any case, we are over extruding a bit. You normally take your E steps divided by your calculated E steps to your new E steps is equal to the. Um, distance you traveled divided by the distance you were intending to travel. So you're measuring distance over your regular distance. And you can see we're going a little farther than we should, so you make sure the number that you get is smaller. If the number you get is bigger, change your ratio around, and you'll be alright there. And that can be changed with the M92 command. So you just do like M92 E, um, what, this was 2080, so about 1700 or so. And then after changing it, redo your test to see how much closer you are. Redoing it to verify, always a good idea. But I want to see how we're doing on the Z. It's going to be a little harder to measure, but we're going to be doing the same thing. Let me get the hot end out of here. Go away. The Z starting at the roller because we need to mark where we are on the printer where we're measuring from so we can see how far it has gone. So basically I'm measuring from this line to this line. Now we're going to request a move of 10 millimeters. It's not going anywhere. Oh, 10 millimeters a minute. That's a whole minute to move 10 millimeters. Let's set that to 60 millimeters a minute. And I'm not sure if I ended up asking it for 10 millimeters of movement or a lot more because I didn't think it was moving, so I clicked some random stuff. I'll just let her buck you guys can fast forward for a moment. Okay, we're gonna try that again. So it should be moving one millimeter a second now, which is still not fast, but I wanna give it the best chance to do useful things. A little motion indicator guy on there. I'm gonna line up this mark here and move the bed 100 millimeters. I should have done a smaller move to start with, in fact. So I'm realizing that this is 100 millimeters, and I think it's off by a lot more than that. However, it is moving. Moving smooth, and we're wearing in the gearbox, so we're still doing useful things. So it should be stopping about now, and we're going a good bit farther. 
So as I suspected from the appearance of our test print, we're moving a lot more in Z than we ought to be. So we're actually lined right up with our mark, so I'm going to move it 10 millimeters. I'll measure how far we actually go. We went about 35 millimeters. So we're moving three and a half times too far. It's a little bit crazy. Our Z steps per millimeter were set to 14,250. So divide that by three and a half, you get 3,958. So I'm going to reset that, which is M92 Z3958. Ten more millimeters, and you see we're going quite a bit. It's less distance. Get the marker out. And get ourselves a new line. So now I'm going to move. I'll make it 60 millimeters because that should be 60 seconds. The larger your movement when you measure, the closer you're going to get because your error with the care of calipers is constant. So if you're within a tenth, which is pretty easy to do with manual guys, even these marks, that'll be a tenth divided by the hundred millimeters that you moved, or divided by the 60 millimeters that you've moved. So, when you're measuring things, the bigger the thing you're measuring, generally the better it is, so that your errors are smaller. But with that, we're actually going to start another print, because we want to see this thing printing. Oh, actually we're going to do the, real quick, we're setting the Y offset. We home at the top, so this screw, and the distance between the carriage, I'll move the carriage away so you can see better. When we home, we're homing up against this screw. And so if I home Y, G28Y, we stop right there. From an M114 to get our position, the Y is at 73 millimeters. G0, Y0, drop the Y down to the bed. And now you want your nozzle to be just touching the fabric, and it is, because I already did calibrate it. But if you want to get your nozzle closer, you can tighten the screw, so literally pushing the nozzle closer to the bed, loosen the screw to move it a little bit farther away. And you should generally do this with the nozzle warm to, I usually do 150. Warm enough that I'm not going to melt the belt, but also that it's um, pretty close. But I'm going to switch over to time lapse and run that same print. So the print is the Kirimoto cube. It's just a cube with some little internal geometry. But quick going, happy printing, and this will be the first semi-calibrated print of my baby belt. Mm -hmm.